What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding, as is very apparent that you're seeing it right now, doing a T-bar row, because it is back day. And this is actually a T-bar row machine, instead of using the barbell, we are using this machine, and this machine actually prevents you from cheating more. You cannot really you know, do a shrugging movement because the plateau, the platform that you stand on, it's already in an incline position. So when you stand on it, you're already in a more difficult position uh, as opposed to the weight. So the weight will actually feel a lot heavier. Normally, I would be able to do 120 or even 140 kilos on the T-bar row, but we're not going anywhere near that weight because we are all about proper deep range of motion and proper form. That is what classic bodybuilding is all about. And to demonstrate that, well, actually, he, this guy wearing vintage genetics apparel, but even, you know, this is uh, set number four. Uh, one more set, we're going heavier than this, but we're not showing that. But as you can see, I'm going as deep as I can, stretching the lats, going below the knees at least. That's what you guys have got to remember, go at least below the knees, but even lower if you can, while keeping the back straight or arched. At least keeping it in a neutral position so that you have you know, less chance of getting an injury in the lower back and you automatically contract the lats better and stretch them more efficiently. And by the way, I haven't told you guys yet, but we are working out with Bob. So we're working out with the three of us and the three of us work out hard. So we're all going heavy, uh, not a lot of rest pause in between, so it was a very good workout, and he is, you know, Bob is really strong, he was able to do the same weights as us, and sometimes even heavier, you know, I'm just getting out of the competition mode, it kind of takes a couple of weeks, and sometimes even two months to get back to your old strength level, uh, everything is pretty much back except for the back. Hey, two backs in one sentence. But yes, the back isn't as strong as it used to be, but it will only take a few weeks. But this set is some paused reps. I like to do that when I cannot really go very heavy. Uh, I want to squeeze every single muscle fiber at the last set by doing paused reps. Um, so that's a very nice way to end an exercise if you feel like you haven't done enough. And then moving on to another classic exercise, the barbell row. This is basically a back thickness workout, but also, you know, working the width at the same time when doing a deep range of motion like this. The T-bar row works the lower lats and the lower back more. And this one is for the upper lats, because as you can see, when you go down, you really stretch the lats like that, but also the lower back because it needs to hold you in a stable position. And when you contract it upwards, you automatically contract the lower back as well, if you do it right. If you do not feel your lower back when going upwards and you cannot do it, you cannot contract it, then you are going too heavy. You have to lighten the weight. I used to do 120 kilos on the barbell row years ago, and that's strange, I'm not doing as much weight today, because now I'm more aware of muscle contraction, that's why a lot of guys who are not as big as me muscle-wise can actually be just as strong, because you know they got the hang of the momentum, they got the hang of the movement, but what I'm more focused on is the contraction of the muscles, which you can see again right here using another paused rep set to finish off these barbell rows, just like at the T-bar rows at the start. And I'm just a little more upright because it makes it easier to contract the lower back. And that's exactly what I wanted to achieve during this uh, squeeze, during this paused rep. And that's exactly what I recommend to, to you guys as well. If you think you're going uh, too heavy, or you know, if you think you're strong, just try a pause rep with it. If you cannot pause even one rep, then it is too heavy for you and you're relying too much on momentum. 
As I said, it's all about the back thickness in this workout, but automatically uh, targeting the lats as well. And this is a prime example of combining the two, you know, back workout styles, the width and the thickness. I like this one a lot. It's uh, usually you do this closed grip and you pull it towards your belly button. But I like doing this and pulling it towards the lower chest or the upper chest, depending on how you enjoy, feel the contraction in the upper back, because I want to improve upon my traps. And that's what I'm focusing on when doing these exercises mostly. So normally the seated row is uh, for the lower back and this one is for the upper back, but they're both for back thickness. Now, not the back of my rug, right side. So, uh, so you know, sometimes the problem with being tall and using a full range of motion is that the machine is not, you know, it's not suited for it. It's too short. But, you know, using a full range of motion, guys, especially when doing back, is so important. Especially the stretch, but also the contraction. The larger the stretch, the more blood is being rushed into the muscle the stronger and more effective the contraction will be. Just keep that in mind. Just don't focus on the heavy weights. I'm not doing that either. Some people do more weight than me, but you know, I realize that using the muscles purely for the contraction and the stretch and letting the weight come second has brought me many more, much more gains than before. Uh, a couple of years ago, as I mentioned before, I was, uh, you know, pound for pound, probably just as strong, but um, not really in the sense that I was able to do the same weight using the same kind of muscle contraction, the same range of motion. I used to do the same weight, but with more momentum, a shorter range of motion, not using the muscles correctly, a less of a mind-muscle connection. And by learning and experiencing what works for me over the years, picking a lighter weight just to be able to stretch contract properly has helped me tremendously. Yes, it is important to do as heavy as you can, but not too heavy that you cannot even engage every single muscle fiber in the muscle group that you're working. If you want to be a complete bodybuilder, you have to use the complete full develop possibilities in the muscles. Hey, I'm Dutch, man. Sometimes the words don't come to me immediately. But yes, that was the fourth exercise and we're moving on to the fifth. Normally, I do four exercises for back or chest, but this time I'm doing five because the previous one was basically for the upper, you know, for the traps and the rear delts. Mostly for the traps for me though, I really focused on the traps and did not consciously contract the rear delts even though it's the same movement. But moving on to the cable pull overs. So, the cable pullovers are comparable to the double pullovers, but the difference is with the double pullovers, the emphasis is with the stretch and the contraction is more difficult. With the cable pullovers, however, it's the opposite way around. It's the other way around. This time, the contraction is much easier. You simply pull the cable down to your uh, abdominals basically while staying pretty much parallel or a little above parallel to the floor and when you go up the stretch is more difficult but if you can combine the two as I mentioned before the stretch and the contraction that's the best of both worlds I recommend doing double pullovers mostly though because first of all it's a free exercise and the stretch on there is not replicable in any other exercise and it's old school and it targets the serratus muscle much better but this one is a great finisher as well and then moving on to the biceps i decided to take with me the classic arm blaster it's a fancy name, but basically the arm blaster is what I'm basically wearing right there around my neck. It supports the elbows in front of the body, keeping the tension on the biceps 
for a longer range of motion. Usually when you go downwards on this barbell curl, this easy curl barbell curl, what happens is you lose the tension at the bottom. But because your elbows are being pushed forward by the arm blaster, the tension is shifted and it will actually remain there even at the very bottom. So this is comparable to a preacher curl, you know, a preacher bench, but it's different. I thought it would feel, you know, just like an, another exercise in a gym, at least like a preacher curl or something, but it does not. It feels different. I always wondered why the guys of the 70s like Arnold Schwarzenegger used the arm blaster and also um, Robbie Robinson. You know, the one with the incredible peaks of the biceps, you can see that right here. Guys like this incorporated this exercise in their routine. And by doing this exercise like this, you can understand why. The contraction is just there, the range of motion is used to a better degree because at the bottom the tension doesn't disappear and the contraction therefore is actually stronger and you are still able to go pretty heavy, which is another benefit of this exercise. The arm blaster is simply amazing and if you happen to be able to buy one, if you see one somewhere, I recommend you buy it because it's simply different from anything you can do at the gym. Especially when you do it with dumbbells, what we just did the uh, easy curl bar today. But with anything, it just feels different. You can do hammer curls, dumbbell curls, uh, barbell curls, and it's all amazing. Now this was already quite a heavy set. We're all doing the same way here, which is quite nice. You know, not to have to change the plates at all. We're all doing the same heavy weight. Normally, you know, these are pretty much four little five kilo plates or two big. 10 kilo plates and usually I do three little five kilo plates which is pretty heavy for me to use with good form but for some reason uh, with the arm blaster I'm able to go heavier or I've just become quite a bit stronger that's also possible but yes going heavy with biceps is not always necessary but when you're able to do so with proper form and a full range of motion then it does have its benefits because then you can load the muscle with more stress and the more stress the muscle fibers you're working are enduring the more hypertrophy or muscle growth will occur and then for the next classic exercise the close grip preacher easy bar curl this one you need the easy bar curl you cannot do it with a straight bar because uh, this handle you can see this bar is crooked in a way that you can actually grab it um, close grip and be comfortable with your wrists otherwise you will feel your wrists get hurt and you won't be able to feel or be able to focus on the biceps I explained a lot of this before in my other videos but I will never stop doing so having a close grip emphasizes the outer head of the bicep the bicep has two heads, the inner head and the outer head. Now, what do you want to do when you want to increase the peak or the height of the bicep? You want the outside of the bicep to overshadow the inner side. The inner side is there more for the thickness, along with the uh, outer brachialis, which you target with hammer curls. So the inner side is there for the thickness, but the outer side is there for the height and the peak and that is what you target when you use this with a close grip on the easy curl bar on the preacher curl obviously you can do it standing as well but this preacher curl this preacher bench emphasizes the contraction even more and causes uh, tension among the full range of motion just like the arm blesser does but it simply does feel different. And then the last exercise, the standing double cable curl. This is also one of my favorites, but I don't really do it that often. Uh, I should do it more often because it feels great. Uh, again, 
uh, full range of motion is what you got to use. A lot of people use a half range of motion here, especially uh, they just don't want to stretch, which is weird to me. You always got to stretch the biceps if you want to be able to properly grow and elongate them. Because tension, when the muscle is actually releasing the weight, when there's tension at that moment in the negative portion of the repetition, that is when your body is sending a strong signal to make the muscle grow. And that is the opposite of what people think. They think when they push the weight, that's the most important part, but no, you got to control the weight. That's why I always advocate going on the negative at least as slow as the positive. And sometimes you got to even explode for the push part of the movement and go slowly down for the negative part of the movement. And especially for hamstrings, this has been studied and scientifically proven that the hamstrings grow better when you're doing heavy negatives and there's almost no one in the gym and i just wanted to check out my current shape so this is pretty much my lean bulking off-season shape um this is the shape i like to stay in i'm actually going to do a guest posing this weekend so yeah that's another motivator to stay in shape but i just like to be full but at the same time you're still you know able to see some striations and of course the shape of the muscles which is very important to me because you want to actually see if you are fixing your weak points you want to see what you want to work on and it's just a much better feeling to actually see the muscles that you're working anyway guys that was the video tomorrow i will make a specific video about the vintage genetics clothing line to be released in a couple of days i'll show you some of the clothing and how far i'm uh, with the website and what's going on exactly to give you all the updates that you might want need desire anyway guys don't forget to stay golden time to target the upper chest Guillotine chest press, bench press.